The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. OK. Uh... Hope you all had a good weekend. And uh, if you recall, last time uh, we were talking about the uh, Fermi Dirac distribution, Boson Einstein distribution. And uh, 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 as I say, for this is the average number of particles in one quantum state, right? So uh, at certain energy and with a uh, certain temperature and with certain temporal potential. And uh, uh, we stated that for photons and photons uh, at thermal equilibrium, uh, the chemical potential mu uh, equals zero. Uh, however, I caution you uh, if you do any light emitting devices uh, or if you do solar cells, uh, the um, uh, chemical potential uh, of photons, the emitted photons, is not zero. And that's because uh, in this case, the photon is interacting with the electrons, uh, holes, and uh, uh, you have, we'll say, electron holes are not at the equilibrium. And that's, uh, in this case, you actually have a mu not equaling zero. And that's why uh, the light emitted from a, a light emitting diode or laser can be much higher than the black body uh, radiation intensity. And uh, uh, we, um, uh, and from there, once we have this average number of particles, we, we discuss the applications. Uh, essentially, uh, what we have discussed now is quantum mechanics tells me what's the energy of any matter I give you, right? A crystal, what's the electron energy levels, what's the photon energy levels, a molecule or atom, right? In principle, we can solve. Those are the quantum mechanically allowable ground state energy. There's no temperature there, right? And then we add it to uh, uh, the each quantum state, the distribution function f, right? That's how many. So this is the energy of a quantum state. This is how many particles we have at that quantum state. And then we discuss the density of states. That's uh, per near that energy level, how many of those quantum states, right? So we're doing our counting. And uh, by this time, uh, what I'm hoping is using, so we show the black body radiation, in that case is H nu, and the Bose-Einstein distribution, density of states of photons, and you can easily say the black body radiation law uh, based on uh, these expressions. If you need a chair there, other chairs in the front. And uh, uh, then if you take, so this gives the energy density, right? And uh, if you take a temperature derivative, derivative of that energy density, you get the specific heat. Uh, although for photons, we seldom talk about specific heat. And that's why, uh, say, for uh, photons, the lattice, we can measure it. So we use the specific heat. And at the low temperature, you get a T cubic power, and that's uh, very similar to what is black body radiation normal T force power. That's the energy and the temp temperature derivative will give you T cubic power, right? So uh, uh, at the end of the last lecture, I said uh, I'm going to tell you I could just stop here and move to the next chapter, but I'm going to use half of today's lecture to tell you uh, statistical foundation because there are some very useful language. Uh, I'm not going to test you, as I said, but I thought it's really beautiful. So it's good that uh, you have some, you know the terminologies here. Uh, so uh, in uh, statistics, what do we want if I have, for example, uh, a system, um, like the equilibrium we're surrounding, I want to measure its energy, or I, I want to measure its temperature. So what I have is a time average. I do certain amount of measurement over a certain period of time. 
right? Because instantaneously those quantities are fluctuated, right? And so I, uh, one way to uh, find the uh, quantity that we report is the time average. But uh, uh, in statistical uh, mechanics, uh, the, uh, the framework is developed most along the ensemble average. There is a time average. For example, if you do molecular dynamic simulation, right, you actually solve the equation of motion and you get the trajectory of the atoms and then you see how to do the averaging. And uh, uh, the ensemble average is based on not considering time history. So if I have a system, there are many quantum, quantum mechanics say, okay, I can go to solve in principle, Schrodinger equation, I find all quantum states of the system, right? So uh, I have uh, uh, quantum state one and all those quantum states. And this omega is typically much, much larger than the number of particles you have. In fact, uh, the, uh, we'll see soon even one atom, the quantum state, say allowable quantum state in this room from one molecule will be much, much larger than the total number of molecules in this room. So this is a, a huge number, omega, right? And uh, uh, the uh, ensemble averages actually look at uh, each of these quantum states, the time evolution. You can, but right now, let's don't think about time, right? Each quantum state, what's the probability? So if you do a statistic, uh, uh, averaging is what's the probability of uh, observing quantum state i, right? So that's the, and in that quantum state, what's this quantity xi? For example, what's the energy of that quantum state? What's the momentum of that quantum state? Microscopic, right, we're, we're talking, right? And uh, if I can, I know the probability and now for that, uh, say, one uh, say of the system in my ensemble, this is a many state form ensemble, right? So if I know the probability of observing that quantum state in the ensemble, and then now the, the value that I'm interested in that specific ensemble, then my average, this ensemble average is then xi, pi, and sum over all the quantum state. So this is the concept of ensemble average. And that, in statistics, we do most of the time. We don't actually try to solve the time history. Because time history, like I say, is only a, a tool that was developed after a computer was, uh, uh, so it become very powerful. You saw, for example, uh, like I said, the molecular dynamics, right? So uh, there is a, a very fundamental assumption when these two different ways of averaging are equal to e each other. A system, when the time average equals ensemble average, that's called ergodic, okay? So ergodic system, is when the time average equals ensemble average. And most systems are ergodic. It's a, uh, uh, it turns out that uh, studying long ergodic system is actually an active branch of uh, statistics or physics, right? So, uh, uh, a Gordic system is the one that after some time, it turns to equilibrium. It samples all the states, okay? And, uh, but there, is a, there are interesting examples of a long ergodic system. I can't help to give you one example. And this example is a famous problem is a FPU problem. It's a Fermi. Pasta, Ulam. So it turns out, 
in 1950s, when the computer was just becoming available, and uh, 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 see uh, f this uh, uh, Fermi, Pasta Ulam, they published a report. It was not a UN paper. And what they reported is that they simulated a one-dimensional atomic chain Right? And uh, the spin is not harmonic. Right? Before, when we started full on, we started harmonic, kx, f equals kx. Right? And they added a say, higher order term, nonlinear term. Right? And uh, uh, what that nonlinear term, this is the day later on we'll discuss more, is the cause for scattering. If I have a perfect crystal, all that spring, just to say we have the full-on picture there, you have infinite thermal conductivity because the wave is not interacting with each other. So if I have a crystal, I create a disturbance here. They do not interact. They propagate infinite. So a perfect crystal with a perfect uh, harmonic spring has infinite thermal conductivity, right? And uh, most material has a finite thermal conductivity because those springs uh, are long, hum uh, say, have higher order terms that start to interact different modes. That's a scattering. That's what we're going to talk more, right? So the reason they start a long harmonic spring is look at the scattering in this atomic chain. But what they found is very interesting. And they found that if they put a one mode, put the energy into one mode, after some time, the energy of this mode gave to other modes. Right? But after a long time of simulating, so if it's a, a in normal system, we're going to approach equilibrium. So every mode got uh, some energy, right? That's the, you, part, you input the energy in one mode, and they eventually equal partition, and uh, uh, every, every mode get some energy. But what they found is after some time, all energy came back to this mode. OK? So what does that imply is this system is not ergodic. It doesn't ever approach equilibrium. And uh, uh, um, so from that, what they imply, I, I'm very interested in this because they also imply the, this atomic chain has infinite thermal conductivity. Energy level dissipates. Right, and that was actually motivation when I uh, got a call from a, a friend in Intel. He said, "I oh, will look at the, the solution for heat spreading, right? Thermal management." And I look, I say, "Okay, thermal management." He said, "The the skinny node is going to more slow. It's going to come to an end. We're going to make uh, rather than just a shrink the gate, but that we're going to make more products." So I look at my cell phone. Right? If you look at your iPad, it's all metal here. Right? And some of the old cell phones is plastic. Right? No? Glass. Not glass. They're metals. It's very pretty heavy. <laughs> well, it's actually, uh, say, iPad is aluminum in the backing. Yeah, but that backing is glass. These are all, all glass? Your iPhone backing is glass. Yeah, but there should be metal here, right? <laughs> okay, uh, I think uh, I say basically the metal is used to spread out heat. You see, why your iPad, the backside, the, there's aluminum spread out the heat, right? So I say, can I turn polymer into a good heat conductor? Right? So I said, oh, I remember, uh, say, FPU problem, maybe polymer chain is an infinite heat conductor. So we, uh, that's how we actually started some of polymer work. And we were able to turn polymer, at least made it as good as the most metals. We're, we achieved a 300 times improvement in the molecular chain direction. That's just a fiber. A single molecule we don't know yet. The, theory, the calculations say it may even be much higher, maybe even divergent. We have not been able to measure it. Right? So this is a, think about those fundamental aspects sometimes give you motivation which directions you want to look at. So, but that's just a, there are not many systems that's long ergodic. Most systems are ergodic, so we can have the ensemble average equals time average. And uh, 
Okay. So uh, what uh, uh, with this, I'm going to say there are different ensembles. Okay. And this, uh, there, I'm going to discuss three major uh, ensembles. You can construct your own ensemble. One, uh, so it depends on the macroscopic constraint to the so total system. There are three types. One is I give you a system, and that's closed system, and uh, I fix the total number of particles, the volume, and the energy. Right? So this ensemble has a fixed amount of energy, fixed amount of number of particle and volume. And that's an isolated system, right? Energy is a t constant. And uh, it means it doesn't interact with the surrounding. Volume is constant, number of particles is constant, right? That's an isolated system. So uh, it turns out that the probability so what I'm looking at is what's the probability of observing a quantum state of this macroscopic system, which has many quantum states, right? So this is a one type of uh, constraint. And the next type of constraint is I don't do an isolated system. Rather than the energy is a constant, I have the temperature is a constant. Right? So I have uh, N, V, T. And in this case, temperature is constant, so the energy can fluctuate, and it can interact with the surrounding right? environment. That is, like, let's, say, let's say environment is at a constant temperature. And the third is a system that I don't need to fix the number of particles. It can have mass exchange, the particle exchange with the surrounding, right? So if the particle is in exchange, at the equilibrium, when a system is at the thermal equilibrium, temperature is equal. When a system is at the mass equilibrium, right, the particle equilibrium, the chemical potential is equal, right? So I deal with the system, the chemical potential, volume, temperature are fixed. The number of particles are not fixed. Right? So now, for each of this, I can take a system, and I make, this, uh, make an ensemble. In this case, I make an ensemble of quantum state i. i is the quantum state that has a fixed number of nv u. Right? What's the probability of observing this quantum state? That's the p. That's what I want to find out. And similarly, for this one, is again, uh, i quantum state, what's the probability? But in this case, I have n, I have v, I have t, right? I do not have fixed energy. And this system may have a specific energy ei rather than a given energy. What's the probability of observing this quantum state, specific quantum state, in the whole ensemble? That I have many, many of the such states, right? And same is for this, right? So this, in this case, the ith quantum state can have Ei and Ni. The particle is also not fixed. And uh, I have mu vt. So those are the questions we want to answer. The probability of pi, right? Pi, and here is ei, and uh, uh, with the rest of uh, nvt, and here is pei and ni, and the rest of the fixed quantity mu and t. So we want to find out what's the probability. And uh, we have specific names for the three different constraints and the ensemble form. Here is a microcanonical. Okay. 
And here is canonical. Canonical. And here is a grand canonical. What what what's the, what's the name you want to get? Grand is okay. <laughs> grand canonical. So three different canonical ensembles. Okay. And uh, the starting point is the microcanonical, and the, once you settle on that uh, microcanonical, you can derive all the distribution probability for all other canonical systems. So the microcanonical ensemble. And uh, the uh, for so if I have a uh, total of uh, omega systems in this ensemble, microcanonical, right? And uh, the probability for microcanonical, there's no proof. Is the principle is that for such a system, everybody has an equal right. So equal probability. So in this case, is equal probability because I have a total of omega quantum state. Each quantum state is one over omega. So this is an equal probability uh, assumption. And the, based on this, it was a Boltzmann, uh, let's say for such a system, and uh, Boltzmann Principle collected the number of ensemble in the system is a, a direct measure of the entropy of the system. So the Boltzmann principle say the entropy of such a system, which is a function of the macroscopic constraint. N V mu uh, u, right? So entropy is a function of N V u is K B log omega. That's a Boltzmann principle. Boltzmann was uh, very depressed uh, when he was a great scientist and didn't get a right uh, to get a recognition. He actually uh, jumped into the lake. And so if you have a chance to go to Vienna, his tombstone is the S equals K log of omega. OK? So what I say the here is the entropy. Uh, this one, you have to also take a lot of probability. And uh, by taking logarithm, you actually make the entropy uh, additive, additive quantity. If you have two subsystems, the total entropy of the system is the entropy, the sum of the entropy of each system. Okay, because if you have two systems, each one has an omega, the total combination of state is omega one times omega two. So that makes the log give you the summation. Okay, so uh, this, uh, the fact that, that I have function s is a function of nv mu. Uh, this are called the thermodynamic function, thermodynamic potential. So it turns out for a microcanonical ensemble, the thermodynamic potential is the entropy. If you know entropy as a function NVU, you know everything about this system. Okay? But if you know this as a function of other variables, like a mu or temperature, you do not have that right potential. You do not have all the information. Okay? So why is that? So if I uh, say I know the S of the system, I can find all other quantities. Because uh, if I look at this, S is a function of NVU. 
So I have uh, D, uh, ds do, and uh, I can keep my n, my v constant, uh, do, right? If I write, write it into partial, ds d uh, v, and I write u and n constant, dv plus ds d uh, n, and I have u v constant dn. Right, this is a, a, just a partial derivatives. And if you go to think about what you write in typical thermodynamics, you write u equals Tds minus Pdv, right? So with that, I can say really what I have du, uh, ds du is 1 over T du, right? So if I know this function, I know the temperature. And the ds dv is really p over t dv. So now the pressure. And uh, say so ds dn is the chemical potential over t dn. And uh, using this, you could write it into your more familiar form. This is du equals t ds minus p dv and plus mu dn, right? This is the form that you're more familiar. So what it means, if I know this function, I can find mu, I can find p, I can find t of the system, so I know everything about the system. Okay? But say, uh, typically, we do not do uh, microcanonical ensemble. You, uh, microcanonical ensemble is harder to work with, and then many times uh, we like to work with the system at a constant temperature. Okay, or if you uh, recall when I deal with uh, uh, electron, we say okay, I take uh, one system, and that this there could be electron in, electron out. So that's how we write the uh, uh, Fermi Dirac Bose Einstein distributions. Right, so that's actually the ground the result of ground canonical ensemble. So let's move on to say, if I have here a microcanonical ensemble, what be canonical ensemble probability? Okay, ensemble. And uh, again, I want to find what's the probability of a quantum system, quantum state that has energy EI, right? But uh, unlike a microcanonical ensemble, which we every system has an equal right, this one is no longer equal right. Uh, and if we want to use what we just learned on microcanonical to derive an expression for the probability in this canonical ensemble, what you do is you include the environment, right? Because this system is not isolated. But if I include the environment, right? Here is the environment, right? And uh, all together, this is a closed system, OK? And when I have one quantum state of the system itself at like the energy EI, the environment has many, many other states, right? So the environment will have omega i state, quantum state. So I have to quantize my environment because each combination gives me a system in the microcanonical ensemble. Right? So if my, this omega t is the total quantum state of combined, total of combined system plus environment together, right? Is a system plus environment together. That gives me the total number of states. And then omega i is the, uh, when the system is that the one quantum state, the ice quantum state with energy EI, 
what's the number of states of the environment, right? So if this is omega t and the combined is u t, that's the total energy, right? And the entropy of the combined system and environment is st, okay? And in this case, the uh, energy, because I have a, I combined the system plus environment is my isolated system, right? So the, when the system itself at the EI, the energy of the environment is UT minus EI. They add together to give me constant UT, right? So UT minus EI. That's the uh, environment, the energy of the environment. So my probability, uh, uh, no, say, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, this is the uh, states, quantum states of environment, right? So my probability of counting of the system at EI at certain temperature, and of course I can write, uh, say, volume, uh, say, number density, right? That's my microscopic constraint is one, that's one quantum state of the system, how many states, this is a total count, right? How many states in the environment that also have the, uh, say when the system is at the energy EI? And divided by omega t, that's total, right? So now I need to do a little bit math using the fact that it's a microcanonical ensemble to derive what's this probability. So let me say here is uh, omega i, I have this energy, but say my real average energy of the system is u. E i is just a specific quantum state, so what's the energy of that state, right? So the average energy, because in this case, the average energy can fluctuate. Because the constant temperature, energy can fluctuate, right? So I can write this ut minus ei in terms of ut minus u, which is the average energy of the system, plus u minus ei, which is the deviation, u minus ei is the deviation from the equilibrium, the average energy, right? So that, that's just a function I'm rewriting variables and divided by omega t. Okay? And uh, I could write now, I can go back to use the Boltzmann principle, omega and S relation, right? So I have omega for the environment at this energy and omega for the total, so I can write it in terms of S. So I have really, uh, if you look at it, it's inversion, so it's exponential. S, uh, when the system, uh, the energy is uh, uh, ut minus u plus u minus ei. This is just a variable inside, divided by kb. And I have a log already. Uh, I have exponential already. You will see the Boltzmann factor. And here I have E s of the total of the system, ut and kb. Right? So I'm using the result between s and uh, log of omega. And here, I'm going to expand. This S I'm going to expand. The reason I write it into this is I'm going to expand. This is the equilibrium, the average of the system. This is the average of the environment, ut minus u. And this is a deviation from that average. So I can write this in terms of e equals s equals 
s u t minus u plus d s d u and uh, u minus e i. That's a Taylor expansion, right? d s d u given the microcanonical ensemble DSDU is 1 over T. OK? So now if you go one more step, this is a 1 over T. Here we have 1 over T and U minus EI. So what I have then is uh, T uh, EI. Really, T, I don't need to carry MV, which is a fixed. Doesn't change. So it's a exponential uh, S U T minus U and uh, uh, plus um, U minus E I over T. And uh, I should have K B. And here I should also have K B divided by exponential S. U T. Okay. Right. So uh, uh, the entropy of average entropy here of the total system minus the uh, sy uh, the system. So this is really the entropy of the environment. Right. The entropy of the environment. This is the total entropy. So S U T is the S U T minus U. That's the entropy of the environment. S U, that's the entropy of the system, the additive property of entropy. Right? So with that, this S U cancel, this one. And what I have is now exponential. Uh, U minus ST over KB, that's one, and uh, uh, KBT. And uh, the other is exponential mass EI over KBT. This is a I fly I combine using the relation here. OK. So this is the probability of a uh, Canonical system, canonical ensemble, when one quantum state has an energy EI and uh, the system is at temperature T, what's the probability? Right? And the before here is Yo is a system of average energy, S is the system of average entropy and temperature. So this one is an independent of each quantum state. Here is the quantity for each quantum state. And I can write this as exponential mass EI KBT over Z. And that's Z, 1 over Z is really this factor here. OK, what is U minus ST? Yeah, that's the Helmholtz free energy, right? F. F equals U minus ST. So my thermodynamic potential for a canonical system is actually F. Is F is U minus ST. If I know F as a function of T and V, I need to know that function. F is a function of N, V, T. Then I know everything about this system. OK. So uh, let's do a few more steps. If, uh, if uh, here is my probability, of course, I can find out what's the relation uh, uh, between Z and the EI, because my probability add up of 
P E I and T that has to equal sum of all quantum states must be one. Normalization. Right? And from here, I can say my uh, Z is really sum up over mass E I K B T. Okay? And because F equals U minus T S, now I have a Z, I have this, and I can find, uh, I can also write uh, the uh, Framholtz uh, free energy here is, okay, so from based on what the, the relation I have here, the thermodynamic potential for canonical system, which is uh, uh, N V T, and if I know this function, which is uh, uh, log KB T log Z, this is the one I write, rewrite this one, and uh, I, I have F equals uh, KBT log Z. And if I know this uh, uh, um, Freckholm uh, free energy, I will be, uh, as a function of NVT, I should know everything about this system. Okay? So you can say now from uh, the beauty is uh, this ensemble approach was, uh, uh, is, uh, say, uh, once we start the microcanonical ensemble as a basic assumption equal probability, you can derive probability for all other ensembles. Okay? And if you happen to do molecular dynamic simulation, and uh, uh, you will see that uh, at the end, uh, there is actually a very, some, you know, sometimes most people don't discuss this, is uh, when you simulate a system, you typically simulate a, a, a microcanonical ensemble. You simulate a system with a fixed number of uh, particle and total energy. And in fact, you spend a lot of time trying to maintain your energy constant, otherwise your simulation blow up, uh, it's not stable. But when you do analysis, you actually go, uh, this is a, as I mentioned before, you have to go to like a chapter 10 of my book, and you actually use a canonical ensemble result and uh, Boltzmann statistics. This is uh, the Boltzmann factor here we mentioned before, right? So there is an uh, inherent inconsistency, uh, say inconsistency in this approach. And the people did discuss the ways to treat it. In fact, one way, for example, is to add a thermostat to the molecular dynamic simulation. And there are different ways to add a thermostat. So you can actually, you add a, an additional equation of motion to simulate to the environment. So that uh, as a whole, you can still be self-consistency. So there are different thermostats. Uh, constant the temperature thermostat, there, there are even constant pressure thermostat. But if you go to check all this paper, it actually invariably come to those basic how you can go from one ensemble result to another ensemble result. Okay, so uh, I spend a lot of time uh, in talking going from macroclonical to canonical, right? Um, the next one is here is closed system by constant temperature. So energy exchange with environment. Now if you have an open system and a constant temperature, there is both energy and particle exchange with the environment. And you do the same thing. So you will find that the next probability, I'm not going to derive it now, the grand canonical. And uh, the probability of a quantum system has a, uh, the energy EI has a N, Ni particle is uh, exponential mass EI mass mu Ni KBT. That's what, uh, why we used that before. And divided by another partition function, this one, 
this z is called a partition function. And same z there, partition function. And uh, 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 see the factor here, this is what I started. I say this is the Gibbs factor. Right? That's how we derive from a Dirac Einstein distribution. We start with this probability, and then we say normalization that will give me the partition function there. Right? The normalization factor I use to use the symbol A. But here is symbol Z. And same, say here. So this is the Boltzmann factor for canonical. That's the uh, Gibbs factor for grand canonical for open system, right? So this is essentially what I say. It's the statistical foundation and the beautiful mathematical treatment once you start with microcanonical. And it's pretty, uh, it's a deep concept, so I'm not uh, asking you to, I'm, I said I'm not going to test you, but I want you to know the terminology. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, uh, look uh, look at a few examples how we use this. Let's apply this to a few problems. And uh, uh, I discussed the electron, uh, I discussed Folon from Dirac, for the Einstein. And now let's go back to gas molecule. Right, uh, if you recall in, in chapter one, we discussed the Maxwell distribution, velocity. We say, okay, the, velo the uh, energy of a molecule is uh, uh, one half mvx squared plus vy squared plus vz squared. And, uh, uh, but you could also do quantum particle in box solution, right? We saw this uh, when you have a, a particle in a box and that is uh, h bar square 2m kx square plus ky square plus kz square. You can do either quantum or uh, classical. I'm going to actually use the quantum notation here, right? This is essentially the uh, hk gives you momentum, right? p square 2m. That's the quantum no quantum here. And uh, uh, of course, given the energy, I can go to look at that this is a, um, a system at a constant temperature. So I can use the canonical ensemble and the uh, partition function for one particle. For one particle is Z1. Right, and that will be summing up all possible kx, ky, kz, kx, ky, kz. That's the summing up all energy levels, as uh, uh, what uh, we were uh, showing the z. Where did we see z? Right, z is summing up all energy quantum states. Right. So I sum up all quantum states, and uh, the uh, it's exponential e i, which is the function of k x k y k z, k b t. Right. So this is my partition function z, and uh, 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 and if I, if I want to know what's the average energy, energy, I have my average energy E 
It's just that they, uh, again, it's a summation. I can write a kx, ky, kz rather than three summation symbols. And uh, this is the E as a, this combination of e for each state was how much energy and the probability uh, of uh, the state I, uh, of this quantum state, right? That probability is what I have here, EI kBT over Z. Right? So I have the probability expression, I have the energy expression, I can go to find that average. But there is a simpler way rather than doing this summation. And uh, you can actually prove easily if I take a derivative of, the, uh, of this z, you will say this one is actually is equals d log z1 dy, or y equals kbt. That's just a mathematical result. And for convenience, I, if I find this, I can just take the derivative of z1. OK? Right, if you, if you say, because uh, if I do derivative, I will log, I say this is uh, in the denominator, oh, that gives me z. And uh, the numerator gives me, essential gives me probability. And uh, if I take a kBT as uh, oh, 1 over, this should be, uh, that y should be, k k now I think uh, actually dy should give me, uh, y should be 1 over kBT rather than kBT. Okay, so if you do that, you'll get an e in the front, that's the e in the front. Okay, so uh, that means I do not need to actually do this summation. If I just find the z1, my problem is solved. And then to do z1, I convert this summation. If this one doesn't change rapidly, right, I do my summation into integration using density of states. If it changes rapidly, I cannot do that, right? So if it's a very, the states are, are far apart over a KT, I cannot do that integration to summation, uh, summation to integration. So now, if because these states are closely spaced, I can do it. So you'll find out uh, Z1 from this. I can actually do my integration, this exponential E kBT over density of states dE and zero to infinite. And this density of states for particle in a box, given this dispersion energy with vector relation, you find that that is a way for pi, we, we did this before, so I'm not going to re-derive it, h square, 2m h square and uh, 3 half. We did it in the context of electron, but they could be the same for molecule. Okay? Right? So you substitute the density of states energy to into it, and uh, uh, you find out this one equals V, the volume, divided by lambda cubic. Well, this lambda cubic is uh, uh, lambda itself, not lambda cubic, lambda itself, h square 2 pi m kBT. So this is your uh, lambda, and this lambda is called the thermal de Borg wavelength. Okay? It's a thermal de Borg wavelength. the Broglie wavelength. Why, why is it called thermal de Broglie wavelength? Basically, if you think about it, your energy is a kBT, right? You, you go from that energy to momentum, 
because uh, KBT, one half KBT uh, energy equals uh, momentum P squared divided by uh, uh, 2M, right? From momentum, you go convert into wavelengths. That's what you will get. Okay, so it's called thermal de Broglie wavelengths. So from Z, if I go into here, because Y is one over KBT, so you take a log and they take a derivative, you find the average energy of this equals mass d log z dy and uh, equals three halves kbt. That's the result we found uh, in when we did uh, the, uh, the Maxwell distribution. Okay, came back to the same result, but through a different. This is a more Statistical, rigorous statistical approach, foundation there. And uh, it says the average energy of a particle is 3 half kBT. And recall we commented the equipartition, right? If you have quadratic term in energy, here is 1 half mvx squared or kx squared, that's quadratic term, right? And if this energy do not separate the far apart at high temperature, and each mode contribute one half kBT. That's the equipartition. So I have three modes here at three half kBT. Okay. And uh, um, of course, from here, the specific heat of one molecule is du, uh, DE dt, so 3 half kb, right? Specific heat of one molecule is 3 half kb. And if it's one more, right? It's one more is 3 half kb times the Avogadro constant, and this two gives you the universal gas constant, right? That's what you know from uh, thermodynamics is the 3 half R, right? But you say, no, that's not all 3 half, that's only monatomic gas. What about diatomic gas? Right? What, who remember that? What's the specific of diatomic gas? Huh? Five, right? Five halves, R. So why is that? Okay. So let's go to uh, if I have. In general, okay, and. Uh, this is only one molecule. Let me uh, uh, add one more, uh, say, uh, comment that when I have dilute particles, right? Uh, here I have, before that was one molecule. If I have n molecules, right? And uh, the uh, energy, right, if my energy is, say, Summation of air order molecule EI, right? And the KBT. Okay? And the question is how I do this summation? Right? If it's dilute mo molecules, that means uh, the, uh, the uh, dilute means. Really, the energy levels of those molecules do not affect each other. So my individual molecule solution is pretty much valid, and all the molecules have the same, all those energy levels. Right? So in that case, I will have, this is a, for each quantum state, identical quantum state, EI, I have n molecules. So I have exponential z1 to the nth power. Okay, but there is a one trick that is uh, say uh, the molecules are indistinguishable. If you do your combination, 
If it's indistinguishable object, what do you do? The, count, the probability of counting them. Yeah, so you divide it by n factorial. This is a right. So that's the if you the real if you it's indistinguishable. But when when they are uh, uh, is dilute, right? So when I say dilute, I say the molecule do not affect each other energy levels, right? And uh, uh, when I say dilute, one condition I can use to dilute is the number of states of one molecule in the box is much larger than the number of particles. The number of quantum state of one molecule, right, is much larger than the number of particles. So the, the particles do not influence each other. And so the number of states is really kx, ky, kz times one, right? Each combination of kx, ky, kz gives me one state. So I have the density of states integrated over, uh, say, all energy. And the energy is zero, I can say roughly is three, because uh, the average energy is three half kVT. And that gives me much larger than the total number of molecules. And this actually gives me the condition, if you do your math, again, uh, we have a density of states, mv pi over 6, and 1 half lambda cubic much less than 1. So that's the uh, uh, mathematics. What it means, is you see lambda cubic, lambda is the block of wavelengths. Right? So V divided by N, if I move V to the N on this side, that's a volume of one particle is much larger than the thermal de Broglie wavelengths. So the wave of each atom do not overlap with the other atoms. Right? So that's the particle are dilute, dilute particles. OK, so how I go from here to 3, 5 kBT, and uh, uh, if I have the total energy here, we we'll only consider as a translation. Uh, so if I have the energy of one particle, Ei, right? Here we have a translation, plus you can also have rotation of the particle. You can have the vibration of the particle. Right? And the electronic. So the total partition function for n molecules is really Z of the, uh, here we have translation uh, uh, and uh, rotation and uh, vibration and the electronic partition function each of those to the nth power and divide by n factorial. OK? And from this, En, you go to take the average energy. Once you find that Z, you take the average energy, you take a temperature derivative, right? So it really depends on, at the end, how, because it's a Boltzmann factor, Ei, right? My electronic energy is a few electron volts. OK, let's think about this. What's the specific heat, right? Electron, say, energy level, this is a simple hydrogen model. This is a minus 13.6 eV, right? This is a minus 13.6 divided by 4 because the n square. That's a big gap here, right? So. The electronic energy normally are not excited because the EI over KBT is a huge number, and this is negative, right? So electrons do not go to a higher energy level, and they do not contribute to specific heat at room temperature. 
because their when temperature change, their energy they're still at the ground state, right? And uh, vibration, energy level. What uh, do you know about the vibration frequency of hydrogen? If you think about the gas atmospheric absorption spectrum, right? And uh, uh, in the infrared, a few micron, you got a lot of lines, right? Those lines are the vibrational energy levels. Vibration plus rotation. Rotation is a small energy. Vibration is, uh, is actually, this is a many rotation attached to vibration, okay? So vibration is a few micron. That means about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to 0.5 electron volts. Right, few micron. Uh, one micron is 1.24 electron volts. Right, so uh, if it's two micron, it's 0 0.6. Right, four micron, 0 0.3 electron volts. Okay, and uh, KT is 26 milli electron volts. Right, 26 milli electron volts. So when you have this is 0 0.3. Divide by 0 0.03, that exponential minus 10. So normally vibration at room temperature not exciting. Okay? And rotation turns out a uh, very uh, low temperature, just the rotation itself. Okay, the energy needed to rotate the object. And that's equivalent temperature, okay, is about 80 Kelvin. So at room temperature, rotation, the molecule, rotational modes, all rotational modes are excited. And if you think about rotation is a two degree of freedom, right, theta phi, right? The energy is a one half omega i square, no, one half i omega square is quadratic. The equipartition say there will be another two uh, times one half kT. So if you go to look at the specific heat of molecule, uh, say gas, okay, it's actually not just a uh, step function. It really depends on what the temperature range you're dealing with. And uh, specific heat of constant volume, specific heat, this is the temperature. And uh, the translation is easily excited motion, translational. So this is a three halves R universal gas constant per mole. Okay. And around the 80 Kelvin, the rotation start to kick in. So there is a transition range. And when you go to higher temperature, all the uh, rotational energy are fully excited, equipartition began to be valid. It's not a sharp transition there. So here you get phi two third RU. That's where you say when you do your gas calculation, you say this specific is a five, five halves. Okay. And when you go to thousands of degrees, you add another vibration is uh, one half mv square plus one half kx square. So two quadratic terms. You add another two times one half kBT equipartition. But this will require you go to thousandth degree. Right? So that for gas, you can go to it's a diatomic gas, go to seven half, right? If you have three more atoms, you have to look more of those different modes per molecule. Okay. So uh, that's the uh, discussion on specific heat. And uh, uh, I think uh, what's really for you probably most useful is understanding gas specific heat. And uh, the previous, I spent most of today's lecture really discussing different ensemble. I just want to 
to know their treatment. This is the statistical foundation of Gaudicity and ensemble average and a different ensemble from microcanonical to canonical and grand canonical ensembles. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, briefly where we're going. Now, if you look at the what we have discussed so far, uh, uh, I repeat this before, what we know now is the energy of an atom, of solid molecules, that's a ground state energy, quantum mechanical solution, what are the allowable states of the system. And I have the, for each quantum state at the equilibrium, I can tell what's the average number of particles, and uh, I can count how many states, and uh, using the concept of density of states, right? So, uh, and of course, my start point is really sum up all the discrete states, but this summation, uh, many times I can use the density of states. And of course, the condition for that is that the separation of energy levels are a lot far apart compared to KBT. So I, uh, between two adjacent levels, I can actually convert that summation using uh, integration approximation. Right? Summation is actually accurate. Integration is approximation. It's a reverse. So typically, when we do integration, we do discrete summation. right? And uh, see, the other comment is on the quantum systems, and that summation um, becomes uh, sometimes uh, invalid because the separation is large. So I want to show you, uh, we, we discussed on um, electrons before, and uh, I want to show a few slides on the phonon specific heat. If you have nanostructures, what will happen? Okay, so this was actually a student of mine, and uh, it took, a, took me a while to, to actually uh, really uh, say appreciate this. Um, in fact, my original concept was, was not quite right. Um, so it's a density of state summation. If you want to get a specific heat of material, you sum up a density of states. So if you have a slab, right, uh, a wire, uh, 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 a slab, and a 3D. Uh, if they, uh, in one direction, the uh, uh, distance is very small, they uh, uh, say uh, you, can, you can look at your energy levels and they start to separate. And as you can see, the density of states of 1D and 2D and 3D. Uh, uh, began, I uh, say 3D for a uh, Dubai model, that's uh, omega square, right? And uh, 2D uh, steps and 1D uh, spikes. This is the same actually for, for electron, there are similar spike 1D and 2D, we already say it's a staircase, right? It's steps for electron. And uh, for Folon, it's pretty much similar, except that you, if you average them out, they follow this omega square contour. There. Okay, so if you add this together, you get the uh, um, uh, specific heat. So this was a, a measurement that we did on uh, titanium dioxide nanotubes, and you count circular modes and uh, the spacing between the layers, and you integrate, you get uh, what's the uh, uh, say specific heat trend for uh, different uh, say 3D, 2D, 1D structures. Okay, and uh, um, there was a, a experiment. This was a measurement, and uh, specific heat. If you really want to say for for lattice, you want to say quantization effect, you have to go to very low temperature. And uh, you can see this is the most of the case. 3D is uh, pretty good. You go to a very low temperature, start, say, the deviations. OK, and uh, let me see whether, uh, in fact, uh, there are not uh, any uh, really much 
measurement on the electronic specific heat uh, uh, quantum structures. Let me see whether there are any is this no. So the uh, the for electronic structure actually calculating specific heat is not easy because uh, remember uh, we say uh, uh, you have to calculate the chemical potential because it's a Fermi Dirac system, right? And chemical potential is calculated by the number of particles equals the modes. Uh, that's the one, and the spin. So how many? Uh, oh, not the one. It's a Fermi Dirac distribution because this is how many quantum state, each quantum state, how many particles you have. So and then combine with the energy, both F contain chemical potential and temperature. So when this is a discrete, it's not easy. You have two equations you have to solve, and that's why it's a little bit complex for electronic specific heat in quantum systems. Okay, for bulk is one over. I say they just a specific increase with T, right? Okay, so what are we going to go next? is we know how to calculate equilibrium quantities and the heat storage, for example. And uh, uh, we're next looking into the transport process. And then we need to find out long equilibrium. So if I have 0.1 and 0.2, and they're at a different temperature or different chemical potential, what's the mass flux? What's the heat flux? So I have not discussed we have not discussed this quantity is, uh, say, going from 1 to 2, what's the probability? That's a transmission. And uh, also, what's the velocity? In, uh, in fact, I have shaded away, have not really talked about the, what's the speed of the energy moving, right? With the speed of light, the speed of sound, but the, uh, when we discuss the speed of energy carrier, you have to actually think about the energy packet and the group velocity. And so uh, in the next chapter, uh, next lecture, we're going to start our philosophies. We'll first discuss a wave when it goes through the interface, there's reflection. That's how we calculate transmission, right? And then we'll discuss the wave as a packet, the group velocity. And then we go transit from the wave picture to see eventually we neglect the phase carried by the wave. So that's uh, in the next few lectures, we'll focus on the waves. And uh, uh, that's pretty much in the, in, so far we've been really building a foundation based on waves. So we'll go from wave eventually forgetting wave because that's where the diffusion picture start to become valid.